Today I'm going to show you what's inside your seat belt mechanism and how it works to save your life in a crash. Now most modern vehicles come with a three point safety belt. That means there's an attachment up at the top of the B pillar, one down at the bottom there, and then of course your buckle in between the center console. Now the main part of the mechanism is hidden behind this B pillar cover here, so I'm going to remove this plastic trim. And down at the bottom here you can see this is the wire that goes to the explosive charge. This is the seat belt mechanism and the seat belt that leads up through it. And now I can remove the seat belt assembly from the vehicle. Now here I have the rear seat belt removed from the car. It would normally sit upright just like this. You can see here we've got the reel for the seat belt. Then on this side here we've got the torsional spring that helps it to retract back in its spot. And then on the side here we have this gear mechanism and that's where all the magic happens to help it lock up. Now there are four main purposes to this internal mechanism. The first of which is your gravity sensor. Now it will sense if the vehicle is inclined this way or if it's decelerating this way and it will actually lock the seat belt from expelling any more webbing material. However, if the vehicle is moving at a constant speed and the seat belts are relatively flat, it will allow seat belt to be pulled out. Now this cam will rotate with the retractor according to the gear ratio provided here and when this cam reaches the point where this gravity ball is, it'll lock because I've got it in the slant position. Of course if I bring it to a level position, it will unlock and I can use the seat belt normally. Now the second purpose to this mechanism is to suddenly lock up if it senses a rapid deceleration or a tug on the belt, i.e. the vehicle is slowing down and the occupant is pulling on the seat belt, it'll hold it in place. Now the third purpose of the seat belt is to give you a little bit of slack so you can get this belt over your big fat belly and buckle it up before it'll start locking up again. So you can see that I've got a good amount of belt released here and now the belt is starting to lock up. However, near the top here, it doesn't lock up when I tug on it. Now what initially allows the seat belt to move in and out is the position of the outside notch on this cam over here. Now of course the final purpose of this mechanism is to provide a complete stop when you pull out the seat belt. So if I pull out all of the seat belt here, you can see that it actually locks up when it reaches the end so it doesn't pull it out of the reel. Now you can see we have this light blue cam inside of here that rotates with the retractor and then we have this cam on the outside here that will actually engage with this cam here when the seat belt has reached its maximum position. So you can see as I move the seat belt to its maximum position, click, that cam will click. It will lock the seat belt from being extracted any further and now in order to unlock it I have to keep retracting the seat belt until this cam moves all the way back around here and then it will click this cam back into place just like that and then now the seat belt is free to move back and forth. And of course we've got more spiders. Go away. Now I'm going to open up this mechanism to see what's inside and how it works. So I'm just going to pop off the top cover here and we can have a look inside. So this blue cam here serves two purposes. The first of which is to lock this tooth into the retractor. So this cam is going to come around here and click engage this tooth and that's going to lock this green spline shaft here which is attached to the retractor. Now the second purpose of this blue cam here is to disable and enable the gravity ball. Now this gravity ball will move up and down. Of course you need a little bit of slack in the beginning of the seat belt so you don't want it to lock so this cam here will move in and disable that gravity ball for this period of time. Once the retractor has expelled a certain amount of seat belt this cam will move and allow this gravity ball to take over and lock the seat belt. So I'm just going to remove this gravity ball to show how it works. You can see here when the vehicle is decelerating what's going to happen is that this tooth here is actually going to move upward and that's going to engage with the splines on the shaft here to lock the retractor in place when the vehicle is rapidly decelerating. So now that we've got the two lock mechanisms as well as the gear inside of here off I can remove this free spinning cam here so inside of our blue cam here we have this little notch that actually engages this gear which is on the inside of this gear over here. Now this is a little intricate because we've got this gear that rotates on the inside here and that's got this green cam on it here that will engage the slider. So this slider can move back and forth with the rotation of this gear and this gear is connected to the cam through these two notches over here. Now we'll see why this slider can move back in a minute. So I'm going to remove this gear, this green cam as well as this yellow slider. Of course a lot of things go flying in this video. And with all these components removed we still have the mechanism on the inside here that allows the seat belt to lock when you pull it really quickly. Now you can see that this yellow slider had a little notch that when it moves back and forth inside of here it activates a little tooth inside of there that's spring loaded. Now I'm going to remove this blue gear here and then we have the green spline shaft. Now this here is the retractor tooth. You can see that there's about 10 degrees of free play inside of here and this is basically locking and unlocking the mechanism on the inside that we're going to see next. Of course you have the spring here that keeps the spring tension to keep this unlocked. So in this case if it's 
moved in this direction, the retractor is unlocked and will allow you to pull your seat belt. And if it's in this position here, the seat belt is locked and you can't pull your seat belt. Now if you remember this slider that moved back and forth, it's got this tooth on it over here and that engages and disengages the lock here. And that's to allow the retractor to unlock for the first few inches. Remember it's controlled by this cam over here so you can actually put this seat belt around your big fat belly before it starts to lock up again. Now if I remove the retractor gear here, now inside of here we have two metal lockers that will lock this retractor shaft onto the housing spline here with these teeth. You can see that they operate by the principle of centrifugal force, i.e. if you're pulling the belt nice and slowly, these are actually going to stay where they are because they're actually attached to the spring through this gear that we saw earlier. Now what happens when you pull on the seatbelt really tight is that these will lock up. And that's because from centrifugal force these will have a tendency to push outward as it's rotating this way and that will cause these teeth to engage with the teeth in the housing and lock your seat belt. Now in order to unlock the seat belt, that's where this return spring comes in. It pushes these two cams together away from this gear and it will allow you to pull your seat belt out. Now on this side here, you have a giant torsional spring that's responsible for pulling back the seat belt when you retract it. All right, so I'm just gonna pry up here on a screwdriver. Now this spring has a little notch where the retractor will retract in and it's preloaded with a bunch of tension and as you pull it out here it gets tighter and tighter and of course as you retract it it will retract back to its home position. Ooh, yeah. I told you a lot of things are going to go flying in this video. And you can see the spring is actually made up of, well, spring steel it seems like, of course. Now of course the most important part of the seat belt is the webbing itself. Now these things have to be made really strong because it has to withstand the weight of a human during an impact in a collision. You can see it's sewn together with all these weave fibers here. In fact it's so strong that I've actually used this to lift the engine out of the Corolla. Now these are all the components that go into making the rear seat belts on your car lock. Of course the front seat belt are a little bit different so let's go have a look at those ones. So here we have the front seat belt removed from the vehicle. Now just like the rear seat belt we do have your locking mechanism housed inside of here and we've got the gravity mechanism that will sense if the car is decelerating. Now this one does not have a preset length where it starts locking so it'll actually start locking from right at the bottom unlike the rear seat belts which had a different cam inside of here. Now also as you reach near the end of the reel it just stops there's no actual mechanical locker like how the rear ones had. Now of course on this side here we have your tension spring that's responsible for retracting the seat belt. Now what's different about this is that we have a pretensioner on this seat belt. Now how a pretensioner works is we've got an explosive charge on the inside here and during a collision this explosive charge is going to fire off just like your airbags. Now what that'll do is if you've got any slack inside of your seat belt it's going to tension that up so it goes nice and firm against your body and it holds you against smacking your face from the dashboard. Now because it is a little bit dangerous for me to start taking this apart with this explosive attached I'm going to fire off this explosive. There's two contacts here that you apply 12 volts to and I'm going to show you how the pretensioner works. So you can see this is my setup. I've got the seat belt with a little bit of a loop secured by a brick over there and I've got a brick on top of the seat belt and tensioner over here and of course I've got my wires that I'm going to take out to my battery. Three, two, one. All right, so here we have take two, the passenger side belt. I've got a lot more tension in the seat belt so we can see if it's going to retract. So I'm just gonna put my brother's old toothbrush here just to see what it's gonna do. Three, two, one. All right, so you can see here, that was quite a lot of force. And we have a broken toothbrush. And we have the other side of the toothbrush here. My brother's not going to be too happy. Okay, so we have two exploded seat belt pretensioners and one broken toothbrush later. And you can see that the driver's side belt here is all tangled up and wind up and it's completely locked. And the passenger side here, it's kind of locked. It's still messed up. It doesn't retract very well. You've got your pretensioner here, which I can now magically screw off. And once you screw that off, you can see that there's this piston inside of here that actually moved from this position to this position during the explosion. And then you've got these two cables here. Now I'm going to pop off these plastic covers to see what's inside. Of course, you have your spring tensioner inside of here to retract the seat belt. So inside of here, there's three Torx bolts that I'm going to remove next. And then I can remove this top cover. And then I can remove the pretensioner assembly. So we can see inside of this pretensioner, we have this cable that's attached to the piston for the explosive. Now what happens is when this explodes, this is going to explode in this direction over here and it's going to tug on this cable. Now when it tugs on this cable here, it's going to tend to rotate this ring around this 
shaft inside of here. Now this ring is connected to this shaft here through these key notches on the side here. Now before the pretensioner blows, this wire is actually wound up inside of here. When the pretensioner blows, it'll actually pull on this wire and that'll cause this to rotate, which will in turn turn the shaft, which will retract the seat buckle inside of here, pulling it back against your body. Now of course all of this happens within a few milliseconds of you colliding with another vehicle. It's usually triggered by the airbag system. Now of course this is going to lock up and become useless once you crash, so you will have to replace this if you intend to put the vehicle back on the road. That was a lot of force. Well, there you have it. These are all the components that go into making your seat belts work to keep you safe in the event of a collision. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one.